In chapter 4, section 2, we're going to look at mean value theorem, and I can explain this with a picture. So imagine we have a curve, x, y, and let's say it just looks something like this, and we pick a value A and a value B. And we find the slope of the secant line through those two points. So we find the rise over run of this, which we call slope of the secant line. Well, that would be calculated by taking the value, the y value at b minus the y value at a, just rise over run, divided by b minus a. Well, there has to be a point in between those two points, we call it point C, that has, and I gotta see if I can get this exactly right, I think it's gonna be right about there, where the slope of the tangent line is exactly the same. So we're gonna say the rise over run of this one is the slope of the tangent line. And that's going to occur at point C. So we're going to equate these two things. We're going to say this slope of the secant line is equal to the derivative of the function at point C. Because we know slopes of tangent lines are just derivatives at, these, uh, at whatever point C. So this is what mean value theorem states. Okay, and we're going to see this in action. So let's look at the first problem. It says, determine whether the statement is true or false. If f prime of c equals zero, then f has a local maximum or minimum at c. So we had seen this before. I had said, okay, let's say I have this curve. Now I'm gonna do it a little differently than I did it last time. The slope of this tangent line is zero. The slope of this tangent line is zero. And what do we notice about those points? This is a local max, because it switches from increasing to decreasing, so it's a hump. And this one is a local min. And at those points, this would be C1, this would be C2. It is true that F of C1 and f of c2, the derivatives at those two points, are equal to zero. But here's one I haven't shown you yet that it's also true. This point right here, its slope, let's call this c3, the slope of c3 is zero. But is this a max or min? local or otherwise? The answer is no. So there is no, you know, max has to go like that and min has to go like this. This thing is going flat and then up again. This is not a hump or a valley. So this particular one, it is not a max or min, but the slope is still zero of the tangent line. So what, I do get this, I get f prime c equals zero, but it's not a max or min, so this is false. You don't always get that. Okay, problem two I think is also a true or false. So it says determine whether the statement is true or false. There, is a, there exists a function such that f of five is minus five, f of 10 is zero, and f prime of x is greater than one for all x. Okay, so it helps to get a picture of this. They're looking when x is 5 and when x is 10. And they say at x of 5, the function is minus 5. And when x is 10, the function is 0, right here. So that gives us two points. It gives us a point here, x is 5, y is minus 5, and 10, 0. So, there exists a function f such that f of 5 equals minus 5, f of 10 equals 0, and f prime of x, they're saying and f prime of x is bigger than 1 
for all x. Well, just based on what I just said, let's use mean value theorem. So mean value theorem says, I don't know what this curve looks like, but let's just find the slope of the secant line. So let's say the curve, in fact, I know how I want to, kind of how I want to draw this. Let's say the curve looks like this, and then it goes up like that, and then it goes like this. Okay. This is going to be uh, the slope of the secant line would be f of 10 minus f of 5 over 10 minus 5. Well, f of 10 is 0, f of 5 is minus 5, and this would be 10 minus 5, which is 5. This would be 5 over 5, which is 1. So in that, re in that region, there should exist an f prime that is 1. Now, what about greater than 1? Yeah, there might be a slope greater than 1 in there. But for all x, and this is where this argument breaks down. So this slope, the slope of these tangent lines is even steeper than this green line. So they're bigger than 1. But then these slopes start to get more shallow. So these slopes here are shallower than this green line slope, so these have to be smaller than 1. So um, the argument breaks down in that only between 5 and 10 can we maybe argue that your slopes are 1 or, or higher, but we don't know what the other, what the curve looks like outside of 5 and 10, so it could look like anything. In fact, what if it looked like this? Here's another more extreme example. So we know the curve between uh, 5 and 10 is generally increasing like this, but what if it actually was decreasing before then, like that, and then it came up and then it decreased again? Well, these slopes are not only less than 1, they're negative. So that's a negative slope, negative slope, negative slope. This is negative, negative, negative. Those are definitely smaller than 1. So this one's false. I can't argue that the slope of every tangent line at the original curve is bigger than 1. Okay, so it helps to draw the picture to visualize those kind of theoretical type of problems. Okay, in this one, it's going to be kind of similar. So we're going to use that formula. There is some f prime of c that equals f of b minus f of a over b minus a. And they're going to give us some of these values. So they say f of 0 is minus 5. f prime of x is less than or equal to 8. For all values of x, how large can f of 5 possibly be? So they're going to solve for f of 5. So let's see what they're using here. They're using 0 and 5. So they have f of 5 minus f of 0 over 5 minus 0. And the first thing they're going to do is they're going to multiply the both sides by 5 minus 0. So we're going to get 5 minus 0 times the derivative of the left side equals f of 5 minus f of 0. Uh, they switch sides on, on what I wrote, but that's essentially exactly what they're writing. Okay, then they're saying, well, f of 0 is negative 5. So let's collapse this into just 5. We don't know f of 5. We're trying to see how big that can be. But we know f of 0 is negative 5. And so we're going to, in essence, get, this is really plus 5. So we're going to get 5 times the derivative at c is equal to f of 5 plus 5. And therefore, uh, let's see here, f 5 times f prime of c minus the 5 from the right side has to equal f of 5. Which I believe gets us, let's see, we just did that one and we have this one now. Okay, now they're saying f prime of c has to be smaller than 8. They said that right here. 
So let's assume the biggest it is is 8, because the bigger f prime is, the bigger f of 5 will be. So let's let it equal 8. So this would be 5 times 8 minus 5 equals f of 5. So that's the biggest this can be, is 8. Therefore, we're going to get 40 minus 5 equals f of 5. Therefore, the biggest the function can ever be at 5, x equals to 5, not 4, is 35. And this just kind of runs through that, um, those numbers. 5 times 8 is 40. Subtract 5, you get 35. So just using the mean value theorem formula and knowing three of the, um, or four of the five pieces of information, we can figure out what the biggest possible value is of the, of the fifth unknown. Uh, and we can say, okay, then it has to be 35 or smaller. Okay, so that's problem three. Okay, problem four and five is just more practice using slope formula for a secant line. So the slope of the secant is just the function with the second uh, value minus the function at the first value divided by x is b and x is a. Or this is old school slope formula. It's y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And in this, they gave us two points, x1, y1, x2, y2. So we're just going to replace y2 with 6, y1 with 0, x2 with 8, x1 with 0, and we'll get the slope of this secant line should be 6, 8, which is 3 fourths. Then we're going to do the same thing with this problem, so it's x1, y1, x2, y2, same formula. This time we have 2 minus minus 1, be careful of double negatives. Then it's minus 3 is the x value for point 2, minus 1 the x value for point 1, and we get 2 plus 1 over minus 4, which is 3 fourths. Uh, oops, I forgot the minus sign. The minus on the bottom, minus 3 fourths. So uh, just two points, find their slope, should be pretty straightforward on that one, on those two. Okay, for problem six, they want us to try the mean value theorem, and it says, um, does it satisfy the conditions? So here's the conditions for mean value theorem. One, f of x has to be continuous on the interval a, b. Two, f of x has to be differentiable on a, b. So notice the subtle difference here. It has to be continuous on every single point in the interval, including the two endpoints a and b. But it does not have to be differentiable on the entire thing from a to b. And the reason for that is because oftentimes we might have our we might start our interval and end it on nearly vertical lines, and those might not be differentiable. So if we slice this in such a way that we try to look at the, the slopes of the tangent lines at those endpoints, depending on how our window cuts it completely vertical, we could have a messed up slope there. So we're not going to include those endpoints as part of the differentia, differentiability of the, of the function. Okay, so if this is true, then we can say, okay, so if true, then we get that there should be some f prime of c that equals the slope of that secant line. Okay, so we've been using this all along, we just haven't been checking if it's differentiable and continuous. Now it turns out that all polynomials are differentiable and continuous. So this is a polynomial, so if I have f of x equal to 5x squared minus 4x plus 1 on the interval 0 to 2, this is what we call a polynomial so 1 
and 2 are set. So they're guaranteed for uh, a polynomial. Uh, let's not say set, let's say satisfied. It's a little stronger mathematically phrased. Okay, so 1 and 2 conditions are satisfied. And so we can use the mean value theorem to solve this. So I think uh, this says yes, f is continuous on that interval, and it's differentiable on that interval, since polynomials are continuous and differentiable on r. So this r means um, the entire, this is r1, so it's the entire one-dimensional one x uh, number line. one dimension. Okay, so all we have to do is find the derivative. Um, actually, let's do f of b. So f of um, b would equal f of, let's see, the interval on this one is 0 to 2. So it would be f of 2. So I plug 2 into the original equation, 5 times 2 squared minus 4 times 2 plus 1, that's going to equal, I got 13. Then we try f of a, which is equal to f of 0, which would be 5 times 0 squared minus 4 times 0 plus 1, which is just 1. So we're going to plug this into here, and we're going to get 13 minus 1 over 2 minus 0, which is 12 over 2, which is 6. So we're looking for when the derivative of the function equals 6. So now we find the derivative of the function. f prime of x would be equal to 10x minus 4. It's a pretty simple function there. 5x squared becomes 10x, and minus 4x becomes 4, minus 4, and plus 1 goes to 0. And we're setting this equal to 6, so we take, add 4 to both sides, divide both sides by 10, x should equal 1. And that is the critical value c. So when x is 1, the slope of that tangent line is the exact same as the slope of the secant line between 0 and 2. That's problem six. Okay, seven is another one of these where they're gonna to try to make you think. Pictures help. They're looking at x is zero and x is two. And they say when x is zero, the function is minus nine. And when x is two, the function is four. So we get two points. 0 minus 9, 2 comma 4, and it says, does this guarantee that all f prime of x is less than 5 uh, for the function? So again, we're gonna we're gonna we're not sure what this thing looks like, so let's say it just comes in here, goes like this, and then goes like that, something like that. So we're going to find the slope of the secant line from here to here. So that's going to be f of 2 minus f of 0 over 2 minus 0. f of 2 is 4. f of 0 is minus 9 over 2 minus 0. 4 plus 9 is 13 over 2, which is 6.5. So the slope of that secant line is 6.5, which is bigger than 5. But I can use the same argument that, in fact, I drew it, I didn't draw it friendly for this argument. Let me draw it friendly for this argument. Okay, so there's evidence that maybe the slope of, this, of the tangent lines, the derivative, is going to be bigger than 5 in this interval based on the secant line. What happens if I just go just, just outside of this and it happens to look like this? Maybe even dive off like that. All the slopes of these lines, all the f primes of these lines are negative. So negative slope, negative slope, negative slope, negative, negative, negative. So 
these f primes are definitely um, smaller than, oh, they want us to argue smaller than five? Okay, so I had it drawn right the first time. So these would be smaller than five. Well, what if the thing didn't go up like that? What if it went, what if it went strictly down like this? Well, these slopes are much steeper than even this green line. So these f primes are bigger than or equal to five. So they're steeper than the green line. So I cannot argue just because I find one section where the secant line is bigger than some number that that guarantees, uh, or smaller than some number, that that guarantees that everything outside of that interval is going to be smaller or bigger than some number. So no, it does not guarantee that. Very tricky the way they try to take one small picture of the function and say, okay, now that we know about this small chunk, it's good for all the other chunks. Well, you can't say that. We don't know. We have to see it. Okay, problem eight. Speaking of seeing is believing. So here is one where we have a function and it is x minus 3 over x. And I won't go there because we've been doing this enough, but I would say go to decimals.com and plot this. So if you plot this, you will see that it looks like this curve right here. And let me put it in blue so we can see it better. So it looks just like that. And they want us to find the slope of the secant line from 1 comma 4. So notice at point 1, which is right, how did I look at increments here? They did half, so here's 1. It touches exactly 4, a different color. So that's 1 comma 4. And then they want us to use 6 comma 6.5. So this touches right here at 6.5, which is right here. So you can see that that touches. OK, so they want us to find the slope of this secant line from here to here. So it's going to be f of 6 minus f of 1 over 6 minus 1. But f of 6 was 6 and a half. f of 1 was 4 over 6 minus 1. This would be 2.5 divided by 5, which is exactly 1 half. So 2.5 is exactly half of 5. Okay, now they want us to find the C value. So what is, so somewhere in here, actually let me solve it and then we'll see it. And if I do it right, we can see how it's parallel. So find the derivative. So I'm going to write this a little differently. This is x minus 3x to the minus 1. Therefore, the derivative is 1 plus 3x to the minus 2 or we get the derivative is 1 plus 3 over x squared. Now, and I see that I did it wrong. This should have been plus. Therefore, this is plus. Therefore, this is minus. Even professors can be haunted by plus and minus signs. So the minus 1 will come down and make that minus x to the minus 2, so it's 1 minus, there we go. Now we're setting that equal to 1 half. So we're going to subtract 1 from both sides and get minus 3 over x squared equals 1 half minus 1, which is minus 1 half. I can drop the minuses and I can cross multiply and we will get 6 on the left equals x squared on the right. And we'll take a square root with a plus or minus. Square root of 6 equals x. Now, minus square root of 6 is not in the interval. Again, the interval goes from 1 to 6. So this is out. So it's just x equals the square root of 6. And that's going to be our critical value c. 
And square root of 6 is approximately equal to 2.45. So let's see if we can draw this. We're going to have 2.45 would be right about here. That's C. Now if we track this up, there is the dot. And if I draw this very, very carefully, the slope of the tangent line would look like that. And that is, it looks pretty good, these two lines are parallel, which means their slopes are the same. And that's the whole thing that mean value theorem is stating. So I have two of these dots that I'm connecting with the secant line. There should be a point along that curve where the derivative has the exact same slope. And we just found it at square root of 6. Okay, that's, that's kind of a nice problem that illustrates, again, graphically the importance of this theorem. Problem 8. Okay, problem 9 is the exact same kind of problem. Graphical representation that we're going to look for slopes of tangent lines being equal to slopes of secant lines. And they tell us that we have f of x equal to x cubed minus 2x. Again, you can go to decimals.com to get the right curve. It happens to be this curve right here. Okay, then it wants us to look at the secant line through the point minus 2, minus 4, and 2 comma 4. So we can just do slope of the secant line is equal to old school slope formula, x1, y1, x2, y2, same idea. So it's going to be, uh, oh, I guess I'll write it, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, y2 is 4, y1 is minus 4, x2 is 2, x1 is minus 2, so we get 4 plus 4, and we get 2 plus 2, the slope is 2. So we're going to find the derivative, and I believe the secant line is this entire thing. So it went from minus 2 minus 4, which is right here, to positive 2 positive 4, which is right there. So the secant line is this black line right here that I've just made green. That has a slope of 2. Now we're going to find where the derivative has a slope of 2. So the derivative of this function, pretty simple, would be 3x squared minus 2. And we're setting that equal to 2. So we get 3x squared equals 4. We get x squared equals 4 thirds. We get x equals plus or minus the square root of 4 over the square root of 3, which is plus or minus 2 over root 3. And those are the two answers, minus 2 over root 3 and 2 over root 3. But let's find those in the graph and see if we can see how they look again. Okay, these equal plus or minus 1.15. So it's just a little bit past 1 on each side. So it would be minus 1.1, which is about here and positive 1.1, which is about here. And we can see that the slope of that line and the slope of that line are approximately exactly the same as the green. So they're parallel to that green line at those exact points. Okay, so problem nine. Okay, problem 10 is another one where it's going to ask if it satisfies the mean value theorem uh, conditions. And this one, let's see, this is not a polynomial. This is a rational function where we have two polynomials being divided. Now these you have to be real careful about because there are usually points where these things break down. In fact, if x equals minus 2, we get uh, minus 2 over 0, which is undefined, does not exist. So if x equals minus 2, that is going to create a vertical asymptote on the graph. Vertical 
asymptote. And that's going to be a problem. So it will not be continuous or differentiable at x equals minus 2. But minus 2 is not in this interval. So this is not here, not in interval. And it's the only number that's an issue. So because that's the only number that's an issue and it's not an interval, this one is, so it is continuous on this interval and it is differentiable on this interval. So continuous and differentiable. So we have those two conditions met, so we will, we will continue with this problem. Okay, so first thing is we're going to say yes, it's continuous and differentiable on 1 to 4. And now we will try to find the uh, derivative of this thing. So we'll, we'll first calculate um, f. So let's see here. 1 to 4, a is 1, b is 4. So we're going to get f of b, which is f of 4, would be 4 over 4 plus 2. Plug 4 into the original equation. 4 over 6 over 2 thirds. f of a would be f of 1, which is 1 over 1 plus 2, which is 1 over 3. So the formula says take f of b minus f of a over b minus a. So we get 2 thirds minus 1 third over 4 minus 1. 2 thirds take away 1 third is 1 third. 4 minus 1 is 3. 1 third divided by 3 is 1 over 9. Now we're going to set that equal to the derivative and solve for point C. But what is the derivative? The derivative of this function, we have to use fig minus jif, because it's a quotient rule, over g squared. f prime would be the derivative of x, which is 1, times g, which is x plus 2, minus g prime, which is also 1, times f, which is just x, all over x plus 2 squared. This is going to be 1x minus 1x, so the x's cancel. It's just going to be 2 over x plus 2 squared. So we're setting that equal to 1 ninth. So we are going to cross multiply so x plus 2 squared goes into 1, 9 goes into 2, so you're going to get x plus 2 squared equals 9 times 2, which is 18. Take a square root, only the positive uh, value will count. So we get x plus 2 equals square root of 18. Therefore, x is equal to square root of 18 minus 2. And we can simplify that just ever so slightly. Square root of 18 is the same as square root of 9 times 2. And the 9 can crawl out of there as a 3, so we get 3 root 2 minus 2 would be the C value. Okay, and that will do it for mean value theorem and chapter 4, section 2.